So, you. Hey, me? Yeah. So, have you ever started a program, started a workout program, and not finished it? Are you talking to me? Have you ever grabbed a bag of chips, but ate the whole thing? Maybe. Have you ever started a great nutrition plan, lasted the whole week, and kind of blew it on the weekend? Me too. Guess what? It's not your fault. It's kind of biological. Would you like me to explain this? And would you like me to help you overcome it? Let's get started. So humans have systems in our bodies to keep us alive. This goes way back to the caveman days. We have four happiness chemicals up here. And two of them are kind of selfish. We have endorphins and we have dopamine, which are pretty selfish. Endorphins, their whole job is to mask physical pain. So when you exercise and you get that great runner's high, you feel wonderful. And then a little later when the endorphins run out, ouch! Another great example of endorphins are when you're laughing, you laugh too much and you're like, oh, stop, stop, it hurts. That's because we're convulsing our internal organs and when the endorphins run out, it does hurt. So the caveman reason for the endorphins are so we can survive. If we're gonna run out and go hunting, we gotta like that. Hey, the other chemical's called dopamine and that's what gets fired when you accomplish something. So in the caveman days, that's what kept us fed. If we ran out and there's an apple tree up there, dopamine fires. It says, hey, I wanna go get that. Get a little closer to the apple tree, bam, it fires again. Cause you're getting a little closer to your accomplishment. Bam, it fires again and yum. No apple. So when you focus towards your goals, dopamine fires, and we feel better. Yay! This is why we're told we need a tangible goal. You write your goals down and get little pictures. Problem with dopamine is it's highly addictive. So it also fires when we have alcohol, we smoke, we gamble, we overeat, we check our cell phone a little too often. And the problem with those two chemicals, as I told you before, is they're selfish. You don't need anybody else to get those chemicals into your body. But, yay, we have a savior. They're balanced by two other chemicals, serotonin and oxytocin. So what are those? We as humans have survived for thousands of years because we have social systems set up. I mean, we're not the strongest. We don't have the biggest, sharpest teeth, but we have social circles. When we surround ourselves with people who care, we survive. So serotonin fires when we feel pride or we have status. Uh, if you were to be graduating from high school and you're standing up on the stage, you get your diploma, you get this big shot of serotonin. And guess what? Your parents get a big shot of serotonin and you feel happy. Serotonin is trying to help you with that relationship with your parent and your child or your boss and your employee or a coach and a player. I mean, great teams win one for the coach. They want to make them proud. The issue is if you don't earn the serotonin, you will feel unfulfilled. We'll come back to that in a couple minutes. Oxytocin, the best chemical of all. It's the chemical of love. It's the feeling of trust and friendship. It's the reason you like to spend time with your friend. It's released very strongly when uh, between the mother and her child. Oxytocin is usually, hey, we get it from touch, from human touch. But guess how else we can get it? Human generosity, acts of human generosity. Money doesn't work, it has to be generosity. So, like if I told you I went and gave $250 some, to some charity, it wouldn't mean the same to you as if I told you I went out on the streets of Seattle and I actually gave food away to the homeless. Time is a commodity. You can't get that back. 
So we value that the most. Oxytocin counteracts the effect of dopamine. And the more you produce, the more acts of generosity you will um, experience. And you, you, you'll want to do, you'll crave it. So the more you produce, the more is produced. Our bodies are trying to make us repeat behaviors that are in our best interest. If we're out there helping others, others have our back too. Here's the really cool part. Oxytocin inhibits addiction. So remember when I talked to you earlier about the eating all the chips and um, uh, not able to finish your workout programs? Well, here's a couple of strategies that I've used. Here's the chemical I want you to be aware of, called cortisol. Cortisol is released when you have feelings of stress or anxiety. So it's reason for our bodies to produce it are um, in order to keep you alive in case a lion is coming up to get you. So uh, you're, you're, you're grazing in the field, um, somebody goes, a lion, you see that person run, we all run. It's going to stop your growth, it's going to stop your immune system, it's going to slow down everything else in your body that isn't essential to you getting out of that situation right now. It's fight or flight. The problem is cortisol is being released constantly out there in the workforce. Parents come home short-tempered. Um, and it, as a matter of fact, the studies have actually said that uh, parents who have come home with stress-induced, work-induced stress, studies say that their children are more likely to be bullied. So, what can we do to stop all this mess? Because our work is literally killing us in some cases. Remember, being a leader is not a rank. It is the, your ability to empathize and to help another person. The less oxytocin that is released, the less empathetic you will become. So, here's what I have learned. We don't need to finish that chip bag. We can get out there and do our work. We can finish a program. How do you beat a dopamine addiction, oxytocin? How do I make that happen? The last step of the AA, um, of the 12-step program in the AA system is the one that they figure out, figured was the most important one. They realized if you got through all 11 steps and you didn't do this final step, you'd probably go back to drinking. The final step is to help someone else. So here's, here was my strategy. It's actually how I got out of the position of being in the workforce that, that caused all the cortisol and um, uh, um, the, the issues that are plaguing our society right now. Step one, let the endorphins hit you by working out. Step two, let the, let the dopamine fly because what we're going to do is we're going to create visual goals. Visual goals that are performance-based and stepping stones. Remember that apple analogy? The tree was far away. We got closer to the apple. Dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. So we need to make steps that are performance-based steps, like never did, done a push-up before and you're finally doing one, celebrate. Um, if you've got a little black dress sitting in, in the closet, try it on every once in a while, see how much looser it's gotten. And create a long-term goal that you can get closer to and you can see that long-term goal. Don't let it be the scale. These are non-scale victories. The next step is the most important. Help someone else. Come on, there are people around you that are struggling. If somebody has said to you, I wanted to do that walk around um, 
for me, it would have been like Green Lake or some someplace um, uh, close by. Or I wanted to do that mud run. Or I wanted to go to that gym class. Or I wanted to complete that program. I'm going to grab them and I'm going to say, hey, let's do it together. Let's help someone else. Okay? Coach Carla, I hope this helps. Please comment below. I would love to hear who you helped. Thank you. Good rush of oxytocin when you comment below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.